Hey guys, Fiat Travel Instructors. Uh, we're going to shoot another video today. Put my cleaning rag away because my lens was fogging up because it's the humidity in the room. But um, today it's that time of the year. Well, that time of the uh, season again. Well, that time of the year. Yeah, it's that time of the year again. Um, I'm going to set up a couple of bag boxes. Uh, I think I, I'm pretty sure I did a video on this last year too. Uh, I have a couple already set up and they're in the incubator. They've been in there for, oh, a while now. If you hear noises downstairs, the dogs are outside and they're scratching at the door. Uh, that's what they do. They will come in and go right back outside. So, um, we're going to get into that. Um, as far as setting up an egg box, it's pretty simple. Um, and I use, uh, these are the uh, six quart rakers. These are six quart shoe box tubs. tubs. Um, I also use a uh, Light diffuser, cut the size to fit in the tubs, the tubs, and um, yeah, tub, light diffuser, and I use Perlite. Uh, I know there's vermiculite and stuff out there, but uh, I use Perlite here. So um, we'll go ahead and get that going here. Where you situate your the camera so you guys can see it a little bit better. So I will see you guys in a minute. Okay, guys, I think that's in frame pretty well. I'm gonna set up these two tubs here. Um, I know people measure out their perlite and their water. I usually just kind of eyeball it. That's why I use a light diffuser that way. I don't have to be as accurate as necessary, I guess. So what I will do is pour a little bit of perlite in each one. Not making too much of a mess. Easier said than done with me, because I like making messes. All right, ugh. Paralite's inexpensive. Usually, you can usually find it at your uh, Menards or uh, plant store, places like that. I actually got these off of Amazon, two bags. I think it was like, I know it was less than 15 bucks. I know it was probably I don't remember the exact cost because I've had these since last season. Sorry, we're going to spread that out a bit. And I think that's probably enough in there. Um, I usually try and get between an inch and two inches of perlite. As you can see here, kind of even it, even it out and get it kind of smoothed out. And then uh, what I will do is add water to it. I'm going to add a little bit more to the water, I think. Is this an exact science? It can be. Depends on if you want to weigh out all your perlite in your water. I don't want to do that. So, all right, I got the perlite in the tubs now. And I'm going to go ahead and add some lukewarm water. It's not the same temperature as my incubator right now, but I'm not, it doesn't have to be as crucial because I'm not expecting eggs for at least another week and a half. So, if it comes down to it, I will get it up to temp because this will drop the temperature in your incubator. So then you're going to just mix that around a bit, getting it all over. How did I do? So what you want is you want a good consistency to where it's going to clump up and not fall apart. That's pretty good actually. I might add a little bit more water. See, the thing about using the diffusers in your tubs is you can add water to them if you need to later on down the road. Because these have to last 60 plus days usually, because I usually set them up early. So then I'll just flatten all that out. Yeah, get rid of all my paralyzed that stuck to my hands. And then add a little bit to this tub and do the same thing. And if you add too much, not a big deal. You can always, always dump some of the water out. Like this one I added, a, you want it, like I said, you want it to clump up, but you don't want any water to come out of it. 
Oh, I'm squeezing really, really hard and there's no water coming out. This one's almost too wet, but it'll be just fine. So now we're gonna flatten all that out. best as I can. All right. All right. I'm going to move my cart so I don't rinse my hand off because it is covered in Paralyte right now. Try not to make too much of a mess. The stuff does stick to your hands a little bit so if you're not into that then you'll have to figure something else out. It rinses right off. All right. Dry my hands off real quick and then we're going to throw the diffuser in there and I'll show you there's a million egg videos out there, or egg tub videos out there, I know. But this is how I do mine. Did I originally come up with this? Hell no. I'm just copying somebody else on the internet. Uh, somebody else being a thousand other reptile breeders that do this. So, your light diffuser is just going to sit right on top of the paralyte. Push down on it, make sure it's not going to sink. You do not want the eggs to touch the paralyte because if it is saturated, you do not want your eggs to drown. And just a tiny bit more. There. I'm just trying to think okay, uh, this is going to last 60 days maybe, but if it does start to dry out, you'll be able to tell. Throw a lid on. These two are ready to be put in the incubator. Now I do have holes, one on each side of the tubs for ventilation. I'm gonna set these over here behind me. Now my small Exoterra incubator that I have, the commercial one that I bought, I use these little, um, these are 2.8 liter. Uh, they're actually airtight tubs, but I put pinholes in them, only one on each side, so they're not airtight anymore. And these are what I use for that, because they fit perfectly in there. I can fit two of them in there. So, same thing, I add the Paralyte. I always like to have a couple of these ready, just in case. I don't need a huge box for one of those bigger shoe boxes for a clutch. I can just use this for a small clutch. Two, three eggs at the most. Maybe four eggs if they're small. And again, but this one's got about two or three inches in it. Not a big deal. And I'm gonna go ahead and add the water. There. Mix it up a bit. Yeah, there, see? Nice and clumpy. Now I'm just eyeballing this. It's not too hard to do. You can get more precise, like I said, and measure out and weigh your perlite and weigh your water. Um, <clears throat> I usually, I tried doing that last year it worked just fine. I did 200 grams of perlite and I think it was 225 grams of water. Worked out perfectly. The downside of the perlite is in, it does get everywhere. So I'll be cleaning up my cart again before I do anything else up here today. Uh, sorry, I'm just trying to get this done. Okie dokie. And I do have diffusers cut the size. You can pick the diffuser up in a big old sheet. Uh, I don't remember the exact size, but it's like two foot by four foot um, sheet and just cut it to size. And then throw the lid on. And now this one's ready to be put in the incubator. All right, I'm gonna come over here, and you guys can see my shirt real close up. Raise you guys back up again, so you can see my pretty face. Come on, my tripod's not cooperating. Sorry. Bear with me. All right, guys. So that's pretty much all I do for egg boxes. I'll take them. <clears throat> uh, my do-it-yourself incubator has a Herpstat 1 running at 89.6 degrees. I'll throw this in here on this side. 
I'm going to throw this one on the butt. This is the middle shelf. There. And I'm going to check these two. Now this one, these have, this one's been in here for about three weeks now, four weeks now. And it does have condensation on the, uh, the lid. But it's looking like it's still pretty, pretty wet in there. Because you want to keep your tubs as close to 100% humidity without getting the eggs wet. So I will add just a tiny bit of water to this one. Yeah, it's pretty saturated. I'm not overly worried about it being saturated because mainly because I'm not putting the eggs in direct contact with the paralyte. So that was good to go. And incubator is going to yell at me because I keep opening the door to the the, uh, the mini fridge, and uh, it's uh, temperature dropped below my alarm setting. There. Like I said, these been in the, the there for about a month now, four weeks, and they're doing just fine. Plenty of humidity in there, and they're ready to rock and roll. So. All right, that's gonna beep at me for a few minutes now. I'm gonna see if the temperature kind of levels off because the tubs that I put in there were cooler than the uh, temperature that was inside there. So it's gonna drop down to uh, probably about 85 degrees. So. Yeah. But anyways, trying to ignore that. Uh, like I said, I'm expecting eggs. I'm going to show them off here in a minute. 86, 85. Okay. It's leveled out, I think. 86.4. So just keep that in mind if you're doing in and out of your incubator. Your temperature will drop. 86.3. As this has dropped 3 degrees. Will that affect your eggs? Not on a long term, or not on a short term, I mean, but on long term, it, it probably would affect the outcome of your clutches. Though. So you want to be mindful of that. Now I I have my thermostat set at forty percent forty percent power, so it doesn't go all the way up to hundred percent. Raise up really really fast and sit there for a minute and. You know, you don't want to cook your eggs. So, it's at max power that I have it set at right now, which is 40%. And it's going to sit at that 40% and gradually raise the temperature up to the 89.6 again. Once it levels out to whatever the temperature is inside the, the incubator. Should have warned you about this at the beginning of the video. But, uh, in the meantime, let's look at a snake or two while this is doing its thing. We're going to pull out uh, Prometheus. He is our um, spotless clown male. Can't get enough of this little guy. And he's doing really well. Uh, I've already planned out his future pairing uh, this coming season. Well, not this season, but fall time for next year. He's going to go to Aphrodite, our GHI 100% clown female. And we're going to get some GHI spotless clowns next season, which is going to be amazing. So yeah, that's that's what I have planned for this little guy. He'll be up to weight well before then. He's well on his way now. And uh, so yeah, he's doing really well. <clears throat> Isn't he cool? He's, he's awesome. So that's our plan. He also left me a present in this tub. So we'll clean that out here in a minute. Focus on the on him, not me. There you go. Yeah, I love spotting those clowns. They're awesome. So, of course, he's part of the Batman project we have going on here, too. Have not been able to do that project yet. I have two females growing up, and they are not the size yet. I'm going to pull his tub out. And uh, clean out the, the present he left for me. Alright, I will have to 
build up some more paper towels here in a minute. But, um, grab some paper. Bear with me, guys. Like I said, I don't ever plan out my videos. I try and get an idea of what I'm going to do for the video and do that on the fly. So, and this is what we come up with today. Never can have enough of these paper towels. I would use less of them if I didn't use them in the tubs, of course. But all right, temperature is starting to raise back up on my my uh, thermostat now. Went from 85.8 up to 86, so it's it's climbing again. Where's my uh, spray bottle? There it is. When I move my stuff. I can never find it again. Water. Alright, 86.1. It's probably going to take it a good 10 minutes or so to heat all the way back up again. But that's okay. I don't mind that. Uh, I'm going to pull you guys off the tripod here. Alright, flip the screen around. So, yeah. I do have a video. Uh, Older video out there making that incubator right there. Um, little mini fridge. Um, here is my Exoterra incubator, the commercial one that I bought. So I'm actually gonna turn this on for the first time this season. Alright, it's sitting at 79 degrees. I have it set at 89. I'm going to go ahead, it's got a little tray in the bottom, down at the bottom there for water. I'm trying to hold you guys steady. Sorry. I will fill that up. I'm trying not to spill too much of it out inside the incubator. Move all my cards and stuff. It is going to drip. There. That'll collect all the water that's coming out. <laughs> I feel a little too full. Got a little more ambitious than I thought. Now I'm going to go ahead and see this in here. See those, those little. Tubs fit in that incubator perfectly. Close it up and let it run. And uh, Herbstat, love Herbstats. They will alarm when the temperature gets below your setting, of course. I have it set at the bottom numbers of this where it's set at as far as the temperature I want it to stay at. And the top temperature is what it's is uh, at currently, which it's climbing back up to the 89.6. So. I do have a Vivarium Electronics thermostat up here. I wanted to try one out. Uh, it's been working fine. It works great. Have no issues with it. Um, it's a good thermostat. Uh, I do think I personally prefer the um, Herpostats over the, the uh, Vivarium Electronics thermostats. Uh, mainly because I can get a Herpostat 4 and a Herpostat 6 and run six different racks and four different racks off of one thermostat. The Vivarium Electronics, they only offer a um, her, uh, Vivarium Electronics uh, v, uh, VE300 times 2. So you can only run two racks off of one incubator. Now they do stack. They're set up to stack on top of each other. Um, so you're going to pay a little bit more for the Herpostats, I think. Um, Herpostat 6, I think, is running around 450 But you're going to pay about the same price. A little bit less for the um, Vivarium Electronics if you have to buy. Well, you'll pay more if you have to buy three of them to run six racks. So, because you have to buy three separate incubators. If, you, if Vivarium Electronics would come out with one that ran four, four to six racks, I would probably pick one of those up to try it out and see how it worked. But for right now, <clears throat> I do have that one up here. It's doing really well. I have no issues whatsoever with it. It works very, very good. Uh, I have Herpostats on everything else. Uh, I actually have extra Herpostat 1 downstairs that's, that I use at the shows. Uh, trying to pick up a, um, a uh, next level rack, or next level rack, next level display from Tinley this year. Uh, I did talk to the owner via email. Well, I talked to someone there via email uh, that they will be at Tinley on Friday and Sunday. We're going on Saturday. 
So, I talked to Shell. We're going to go up there on Friday afternoon. We're both off. We're going to go up there on Friday afternoon and talk to the, to the guys at Next Level Displays and uh, possibly order a display. I will see if they mind if I film when we get there and, uh, you know, ask a few questions and, and have them run down on the, uh, the actual displays and whatnot. If they're not too busy. If they're too busy, I'm not going to bother with it. Uh, if I can't get a display at that point, I will order one and we will go pick it up from their shop. We're only about an hour and a half away from their shop. Uh, so I will drive up there. And at that point, I will see if we can film and you know do a little a bit of an interview and whatnot at that time. So that's my plans for getting the display. We're at 87 degrees. I'm going to get off here. I'm almost at 20 minutes already. can't believe time flies when you're trying to do these. But uh, as always, guys, like, share, subscribe, hit the bell notification, and set it to all so you know when new video posts. And check us out on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. Go check out our Morph Market page. Go check out our Patreon page if you want to help support the channel. And as always, guys, I'll see everybody in the next video. Bye.